Hello there. Hello. I'm like a nice, a China nice cup China cup and sauce. <laughs> Another housewife looking for a bargain at Cradley Heath Market. Well, that's true enough. But there's more to Dolly Allen than meets the eye. Brought up by foster parents, her mother was a brickyard labourer, she's acknowledged as the funniest woman in the black country, a teller of stories that reflect the rather macabre humour black country folk find in the unlikeliest situations. <laughs> Hello, my lovers. Hello, one of the days last week, you might come back, cause you don't work. I said, hey, did you know who's been in the street today? He says, no, Dracula. I says, no, the television detective van. He said, well, what's that got to do with me? I said, got a good lot to do with you, as we got near a license. He said, well, one, we went to license Forge runs all right around one. <laughs> I said, what runs so fast? I says, that black Mariah will run when it takes you out to jail if we don't get one. I said, they are bad four pounds towards the television license. He does speak. I said, bad four pounds towards the television license. He said, you know, now he says, I think I'm a going all dearing in this one here. So I went round the other side. <laughs> I said, about five pounds towards the television license. He says, you'll come round the other side. It was on him forward. <laughs> well, Dolly Allen, I think she's absolutely great. Quite honestly, I'd see her years ago, but... She didn't truthfully register with me then as she did. She wrote to me, I should think, probably 18 months ago. And she's appeared on one or two charity shows with me and everywhere she's gone, she's absolutely had the audience rolling in the oil. She's clean, she's clever, tells a lot of the old stories, but is one of the very few people, really few, who can make black country folks spill the beer down. And they've got to be good to do that. I went down the market, I wanted some buttons for overcoat. So I said to the man on the stall, I said, how much of the buttons for overcoat? He says, 15 pence. I said, dozen. He says, no, one. I said, get out, I could put a loaf for that. He said, oh, look at the trouble you had of sewing it on. <laughs> Well, I think it really started when I was at school because I used to entertain some of the children, you know, playmates, and I used to sing to them. And the headmasters used to come into the corridor sometimes and he'd give me a penny to sing to the children. And I think it went on like that. And if Erdie Gerdy used to come in the street, I used to dance for them. And they used to love it. And I think it went on and on like that until I suddenly realised, well, I think um, I'd like to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> and when we were coming back on the plane, the captain got up to the mic and he says, ladies and gentlemen, this plane will land two hours behind schedule because one of the engines has conked out. And he says, I looked at Joe. I said, Joe, if ever the other engine conks out, we shall be stuck up here all night. <laughs> but of course, I suppose the real turning point came with the hat. I think so. I had that hat given to me, it must be nearly 20 years, of a person that I worked with at the time, and it was her mother-in-law's. And her mother-in-law died at 94. So I couldn't say how old the hat is, but I shouldn't think there's another like it in our zoo in all the feather. I had the feather from one of the turkeys from the works uh, social night. And uh, it's been in my case ever since. And I don't think I could part with either of them now because I think my luck had changed. Me and Fanny come out there and we were walking up the precinct, we were going round by the church and there was a funeral going by. And on the top of the hearse, I got a chimney sweeps brush and the rods. 
I says, oh, Fanny, there must be a berry in a chimney sweep. And a man is standing by, he says, no, it isn't the chimney sweep, it's his wife. I said, well, one of them brushes are doing on the top. He says, I expect he's got a job to do on the road back. 